What's up everyone? Time for a highly requested album review. It's the fifth studio album by American rock band Red. It's titled A Beauty and Rage and it was funded by a pledge music campaign, got the fans involved, and while I'm sometimes mixed on crowdfunding records, I think that it works for bands like Red because it gives them more freedom as artists. It lets them express themselves more. And with this record, they're kind of exploring their roots a little bit more. If you're into bands like Lacuna Coil, Evanescence, and of course, earlier material from Red, I think that you're really, really going to like Of Beauty and Rage. Right off the bat, I started digging this thing first listen, actually. It starts with this track, Descent, an instrumental, kind of builds things up. The tension is growing, and you can tell. It's a building block of a track. It really just leads into Imposter, the second track on the album, so well. And it just explodes, and immediately I start listening to this thing, and I'm saying, yeah, that's what I love about Red. That's why I loved End of Silence, still my favorite album from Red, so much. I think that I had started falling off the Red bandwagon around Innocence and Instinct, I believe that was 2009. Uh, some tracks on there were pretty cool, but then again, I was kind of mixed on it. And of course, their most recent record, well, you can check my review of that in the description down below. They just went for more of a polished rock sound, kind of stripped away the symphonic elements. And that's kind of what I liked about Red. It's what gave them their signature sound, and I think that it's really cool that they're going back and trying to incorporate that once again without rehashing and doing the same thing. All over this record, you're going to hear the bass and the guitar mesh with the string section and the orchestral elements, and it just sounds so good with Michael Barnes's vocals. They're harsh at times, they come in and they're soft on tracks like Of These Chains, but then they get really intense on tracks like Falling Sky and Imposter, Shadow and Soul. Some of the tracks feel like like they get dragged out a little bit too long. The latter of those that I just mentioned, Shadow and Soul, kind of drags its feet. What keeps you alive? But at the same time, I find myself appreciating something about them each time I listen. It's one of those records that kind of leans towards the heavy side at times, but it's also really nice whenever we see them break down and get a little bit more vulnerable and emotional. All over this record, you're going to hear themes of love, loss, and just dealing with battling against yourself and really the demons in your own mind. Imposter is one of those tracks and hands down the best song on the album in my opinion. Kicks off with this huge aura about it and it's something that just sucked me in and I'm like yes this is what I want to hear from Red. Michael Barnes unleashing on the vocals, the guitar, the bass, the drums. Even though they do have a new session drummer, their drummer departed from them recently, I'm still saying that it's all coming back to be one of my favorite songs by Red to date. Fight to Forget is another one of those tracks that does it for me lyrically. It's something that I'm relating to, I'm connecting to, and also at the same time it's got this awesome app atmosphere about it that just makes me want to give it repeated listens. The track Darkest Part reminds me slightly of the track Animal I Have Become by Three Days Grace, just because they kind of have a similar vocal approach and of course the lyricism on the tracks is kind of similar, talking about turning into someone that you don't even know anymore. I think that this is just a rock record that I'm connecting with and it's good because I haven't connected with an all out just kind of hard rock leaning album in quite some time. I will say this though, I feel like the record overstays its welcome. 15 tracks is just a little bit long for me. It clocks in at over an hour long, and some of the tracks towards the end of this thing, like The Ever, uh, Gravity Lies, and even parts of Take Me Over, kind of feel like a retread of some of their earlier material. It's not very original lyrically, and that's why it kind of has me snoozing at the wheel, if you will. But we do go out on a positive note with Part That's Holding On, followed up nicely by the instrumental track Ascent. Of course, Descent kicks it off. Ascent closes it. It only makes sense. Part That's Holding On is one that I think is just phenomenal lyrically because it speaks of something that we all do. There's a part of us that won't let go of something, whether it's a relationship or something bad that we've done and we keep beating ourselves up over it. It's just something that I feel like, even though that this doesn't have an overwhelming amount of Christian themes on this record because they are a Christian band, I think it's one that can relate to religion and I don't think that it's exclusive for that, of course. But to me personally, it feels like we hold on to things like that we can't let go of, something that we did, something we can't forgive ourselves for, and something we don't think God will forgive us for. And that's not the case. And this is one of those tracks that kind of just sees Michael Barnes beating himself up over something and it's just not worth it and I think he realizes that on the track. It's got a nice powerful and emotive feel to it and it really just brings a reaction out of me as a listener and that's all I can really ask for from Red. I've got to give a mention to the track Falling Sky. It's one that just really surprised me kind of in the middle of the record. A little bit over five minutes long 
but it is powerful and it's a force to be reckoned with. The chorus on the track is massive. It's like a wrecking ball flying in and it just gives me chills. It reminds me so much of Hissue by Thrice. It's one of those albums that I've just loved with time and I think it reminds me of that in the best way possible. There are tracks on the record that kind of feel like they don't stray from the path really enough to make themselves stand out, give themselves their own unique identity. I think Yours Again is one that does that for me. Uh, Gravity Lies, The Ever of These Chains is one that just kind of wades around but never fully takes you in, if that analogy makes any sense. Overall though, I've got to give props to Red. They definitely surprised me with this album. I went into it with mediocre at best expectations and we're coming out of it with a four out of five for a beauty and rage. If you've heard this record, let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about Red in general, and of course, let me know what other reviews I should do. Smash the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy my reviews. If you want to see my vlog channel or my last review, you can click those links right down below me. They're floating the annotations there, or you can click the links in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you very soon right here on ARTV.